delicate and dewy of the unsung heroes of their command. Stand with us today as we celebrate Navy Day and salute those brave men living and dead who have served our nation on the high seas. The heroes of the past knew the United States Navy as the indomitable master of the seas. Now the Navy sweeps through the skyways, master of the air. Today, as part of the Navy Day celebration, a titan of the skies, the largest dirigible in the world, is making its first flight along the Pacific coast. The Macon cruises overhead. In a few moments, we transfer controls to the Macon, where, through the efforts of the Columbia and Darnley Networks, and with the cooperation of the Navy Department in Washington, Paul Rickenbacker and Harrison Holloway are standing by to bring the nation a first-hand impression of the world's largest airship. How those sea heroes of the past would marvel could they see this sight. The twin sciences of the 20th century, aviation and radio, collaborating to bring into your home a vivid account of this newest wonder of the world, the first radio broadcast from the largest airship on Earth. The Macon is now hovering over the Olympic Stadium in Los Angeles, and we will transfer controls to Paul Rickenbacker and Harrison Holloway, who sail the high skies above us. Take it away, Macon!
trouble whatsoever in sleeping. And as far as exercise is concerned, the famous catwalk, about eight inches of cork decked runway extending some 400 feet fore and after the Macon's interior, provides plenty of walking room if you feel like the man on the flying trapeze. You know, weight conservation is a prime requisite in heavier than aircraft. The rigid structure of this ship is duralumin, but uh, to further reduce weight, the flat surface of all girders is punched full of holes, giving a decided lacy appearance to it in the mass. The fellow who punches the holes in Swiss cheese would be green-eyed with envy aboard the Macon. If you can hear that whistle, that is what is known as the sonic altimeter. A whistle is blown, and a stopwatch is held, and the time it takes for the echo to come back from the ground is, uh, makes it possible to compute the altitude. There's also, in addition to the whistle that uh, I hope you can hear, a gun which uh, lappingly shoots around corners. As yet, I've been able to, unable to find out why it's supposed to shoot around corners, but it actually has a curved barrel. This gun served the same purpose as the whistle, providing an echo from the ground which is timed on a stopwatch and the computation made at the altitude.
the broadcast of direct communication with the USS Macon, now hovering over Los Angeles. All right, Macon, take it away again. Now a few words about the flight. Soon after our arrival at the new airship base at Sunnyvale at 8 a.m. on Thursday morning, we were taken to the new $4.5 million hangar to view the Macon at close range. We found her secured to a portable mooring mast holding the ship's bar and a huge steel beam holding the ship's lower fin at the stern. She was just about ready for flight. The crew had placed about 35 tons of gasoline aboard together with about one ton of lubricating oil, food, drinking water, and so on for the crew, sufficient for a full two days flight. At uh, 11 a.m., the station siren was sounded and the Navy crew quickly assembled at their posts under the Macon. The crew, after a roll call and inspection, were checked in and boarded the ship. We were checked in, baggage weight determined, and then we were told to go on board to our landing stations. We had no idea what our landing stations were, but we were assigned them just the same. Our landing stations were in the forward control cabin, and we were asked to remain there until the ship had taken the air. However, in a few moments, we were asked to move to the ward room, which is the officer's uh, mess room. Then, uh, at about uh, 12 noon, the self-propelled mooring mast began to move, pushing the airship back out of the hangar, held a while from swinging by wire cables from the ship to the long steel beam under the after fin. 